All right, 4-Hers, now we're going to be looking at some of the non-insects on your 4-H entomology identification contest information. And so these non-insects, we are not going to look at their life cycle because they're not insects, so they don't necessarily have a complete or an incomplete life cycle, or at least their life cycle is not called incomplete or complete. We also will look at their mouth parts, but won't talk too, too much about them. But for these, you do definitely want to know what is the common name? What is the order they're found in? What is the host or location they're found on? And what is their significance? Are they a pest? Are they inconsequential? Are they beneficial? Or are they variable? Which means sometimes they're good and sometimes they're bad. It just depends on the situation. And so the first order that we're going to look at is called Akari. Akari are all of the ticks and the mites. Every single one of these are going to be pests. They are bad guys. And the host is going to vary. It's animals um, or plants. And the first Akari, the first tick that you need to know is called the Lone Star Tick. Lone Star Ticks are a pest. They have mouth parts that do suck blood. They pierce into the skin and they suck blood. Um, what else I would know about them is that Lone Star Ticks host is cattle or cows and if you look closely they have a little dot the females have a dot on their back which is how they get that name lone star they are found in the lone star state but they're also found in other states but we give them the name the lone star tick the males do not have that dark spot on them but most likely if you receive the picture of this or have to identify it you're going to get a female because it has that identifying characteristic on its back they um, have piercing sucking mouth parts. They will become engorged with blood. So they suck blood and their body will start to swell up and that's called being engorged. And these are considered a hard tick. We'll look at a soft tick in just a minute. If you look at their back, it looks hard. It looks like it would be hard to smash it if you, if you had one in your hands. So the Lone Star Tick the Lone Star Tick was the only thing that the juniors needed to know in this order, a carry, a Kari. So that makes it pretty easy for you juniors. For intermediates, you guys also need to know the spider mite. So this is the only mite that we're gonna look at in this group. These are um, a plant feeding pest and they cause a lot of damage to plants. Um, the host is, of course, plants. They feed on ornamental plants, trees, um, flowers, vegetables, kind of just doesn't really depend. They're very small, so you're going to need a microscope in order to identify them. So on the district contest, you'll probably f see a picture. For the state contest, you might have to have a microscope or a magnifier to be able to identify them. They also have piercing and sucking mouth parts, and they feed on the plant tissues, not blood. Now, if you're a senior, there are two other ticks that you need to be made aware of. There is the brown dog tick, which is just a brown, plain brown tick. Like I mentioned before, if it's the Lone Star tick, you're probably going to see the female with the white spot on the back. So a brown dog tick utilizes dogs as the host, and we all know that ticks are definitely bad guys. The second, or actually the third tick that you need to be made aware of as a senior are called foul ticks or blue bugs. So it might, you might get a little trick where you have to identify um, the common name with the order name. And if you get the name blue bug, don't let that confuse you because blue bugs are not actually bugs, they are ticks. And so um, know that they are Akari. And this is a soft tick. Remember we said that dog ticks and that Lone Star ticks were called hard ticks? Well, these are soft ticks. And if you look at their back, it's all one shape or one color. And they look softer. They don't have a hard shield on their back. They are definitely a pest and they're found on poultry. Poultry are gonna be chickens, turkey, um, things like that. And then, um, you it so the pictures that the 4-h contest gives you is this in the version where it's kind of brown but they also are called blue bugs because they can take on the tint of a blue color or a really dark dark blue or a gray color so be able to i would just be able to identify oh that looks really soft on the outside it looks all the same shape and the same texture that means it's got to be a soft tick versus these guys that have like a shield and they just have pattern to them. They look like they're in pieces or shielded as opposed to one single shape or piece on their back. 
Now the next order that you guys are going to need to know is called RNA. And RNA sounds like a car eats, but it's different. RNA are all of the spiders. So their host is going to vary and there are some spiders that are bad and there are most spiders that are going to be beneficial. And I bet you guys could already guess what are the harmful spiders. One of those are the widow spiders. So keep in mind that we are not calling this a black widow spider. We're calling it a widow spider because black widows are one type of species. And we're just looking at all widow spiders because there's more than just the black widow species. This is definitely a pest. They will bite um, and the venom that they have can cause a medical reaction in humans. So they're a medical concern to us. Their host is going to be woodlot, so you would find these um, under stacked firewood or piles of pallets or piles of wood somewhere is where they're going to be found under debris. They all have an hourglass or two triangles with the pointy parts touching each other on their bellies. It's on the, the belly part of the abdomen. And for those of you that are seniors, I would know that that's called the ventral part. The underside, the belly part is the ventral part of the abdomen. And um, this is how we differentiate widow spiders from other spiders. They all have that hourglass. The bite, the venom that they have, affects your nervous system, and um, it can be it can be more deadly than a rattlesnake venom. But they um, don't give you as much venom, so it's not it's rarely uh, rarely deadly, but can cause some medical reactions where you have to go and see a doctor. A beneficial spider that everybody needs to know is the wolf spider. Wolf spiders kind of have a, a shape on their back, but these guys are going to be really large, very hairy, um, and they kind of have a, a black and gray striping along the back, along the what is called their cephalothorax. These are beneficial. You're going to find them under rocks. So if you go out at night and you move around some rocks, that's probably where they're hiding underneath. They're very active at night and they're very good hunters. So they're seeking out their food. They're not catching it in a web. They're not waiting for it to come to them. They're hunting for their food. And the last spider to know for juniors is for juniors only are yellow garden spiders. You guys might have seen these make huge webs in the trees or on your porch. These are very beneficial. If they are making a web, it means that they're catching food in their web. So they're usually found on the web somewhere. They are found in gardens um, or just out in the landscape. And they are a type of spider called an orb weaver. Being an orb weaver means that they make an orb or a they weave a web. So these are definitely a beneficial spider and they're the only one that's got that bright yellow color on them and they're going to be very large with their legs all spread out. Now if you're an intermediate, you also need to know the crab spiders. Crab spiders have longer front legs than their hind legs are. So remember spiders have eight legs and so their front two sets of legs are going to be longer than the hind legs and they give them the appearance of having crab pinchers. These are beneficial when the, whereas we had the yellow garden spider that lived in a web and we have the, the, um, uh, wolf spider, sorry, that lives under rocks and looks for food. These guys are going to be found on plants waiting for their food to step in front of them so they can reach out and grab them. So they call, they are called sit and wait predators. They sit and they wait for their food to come to them. And the host, that you, the place where you're going to find them most of the time are on plants where there are flowers. They're going to sit on flowering plants trying to gobble up pollinators and other things that are coming to that plant. And the, the second and only other harmful spider that we need to know is the recluse spider. Just like on the widow spider, we didn't call it a black widow, we are not calling this a brown recluse because that's only one type of recluse spider. These are definitely pests. They are brown, um, hairy if you were to be able to see them through a microscope, and they have the shape of a violin or a fiddle on their back. So that's what I would be looking for if you're thinking, gosh, gosh, I don't know if this is a wolf spider or what it is. Look for the fiddle on their back or the violin on their back. And that 
part of them, of their body, is called their cephalothorax. So if you're an intermediate or a senior especially, know that the body regions of a spider is a cephalothorax and a big fat abdomen. These guys are going to be found also um, in board piles. Let's see on the contest, it says board piles. So this they're gonna be under piles of wood. Um, in your home, they might be found like in a closet or an attic or a basement that's not go that you don't go into very often. Outside there can be found in sheds and under those board piles. Uh, so they like areas that are not disturbed because they're reclusive, they like to hide. Their bite is a um, kind of a toxin that eats away at the skin and so it can take a long time for it to heal and it can it causes that reaction in you where your skin just won't heal so different from a, a widow spider where it affects your nervous system this is is going to affect the healing of the skin around where the bite occurred and the venom was sitting for our seniors you guys need to know two other spiders that everyone else doesn't have to know. One of those is called a jumping spider. These are also found in the garden. They are um, active hunters, just like our wolf spider was. They're gonna be found on plants, more, mainly above the ground, not, not necessarily on the ground like the wolf spider is. So these are definitely beneficial. They're very, very fuzzy. Um, they have big palps, big fat palps that look like mustaches, and they have very big eyes. And there are lots of different types of jumping spiders. You can see from this picture, you can just Google Texas jumping spiders, but they all have, if we look closely, big eyes, and they're very, very, very fuzzy. So I look for the very fuzzy body and the very obvious gigantic eyes that tell me that I'm looking at a jumping spider. They, of course, have the ability to jump, and that's why they get that name, Jumping Spider. And then um, the last spider that you need to know are tarantulas. So we actually do have tarantulas that are native to Texas. We have Texas tans, and then Oklahoma tans are real common around here too. But it's a brown tarantula, the largest, um, fluffiest of the spiders. All tarantulas are spiders. They're just very big. So if you're seeing lots of fuzz all over the body and a very decent sized um, spider, very large spider, then it's a tarantula. They are going to be found in the soil. They like to dig burrows and live in those burrows underneath things, but usually if they're under it, they've dug out a burrow. And they're considered beneficial. Um, a lot of people are scared of them because they're very large, but they don't seek out humans to bite. They are not medically important. They're not going to bite your dogs or your cats. They're going to eat other things that they run across, and so they're considered beneficial because they are predators. Now, another order that everybody needs to know, juniors, intermediates, and seniors, is Scorpionis. So this is easy to remember because it sounds like scorpions. So just add an ES to the end of it and you have the order name and the common name is scorpion or scorpions. Scorpions are found in log piles, piles of wood, piles of firewood, um, kind of just things piled up in your yard. They're underneath hiding in those places. And they are gonna be considered a pest. The benefit of scorpions is that they are eating other insects and, and bad things that they might be crawling across on the ground. But they can be a pest because they'll get inside and they sting and that sting is very painful. And so I think everybody pretty much knows what a scorpion looks like. Um, the type of scorpion we have in Texas is called a, the most common one is called a striped bark scorpion. So they can be found on trees, climbing up trees under the bark. The sting is very painful. And then remember what we have all looked at so far are arachnids. So spiders, scorpions, mites, and ticks are all considered arachnids, just like beetles, true bugs, um, moths and um, grasshoppers are all insects. These are all arachnids, just types of arachnids. Now, another type of arachnid that looks similar to a spider but is not technically a spider is a pilionis. And this, if you're a junior, you don't need to know this one, but intermediates and seniors, you do. These are harvest men or daddy long legs. On the contest, call it a harvest men. Don't call it a daddy long legs because you most likely will not get that counted correctly because the contest wants you to call it a harvest men. So these guys are found in caves. They like um, to be um, in like cave-like areas, not giant caves where you can walk through, but we have lots of caves in Texas that are just little cracks in the ground and open up underneath. So they're found in those places. They um, 
are considered inconsequential. They're neither good nor bad. They're just there. And they're not they're not considered beneficial because they really don't have functioning mouth parts. So you guys may have heard um, the urban legend that they are the most venomous things, but they just have too small of a mouth to be able to bite you. And that's not actually true. And you know what a daddy long legs or a harvestman looks like. They have super long legs, a teeny, teeny, tiny body. And a lot of times you'll see them all balled up underneath things like um, where the concrete comes out of the ground before the the rock or the wood starts on your house. You might find them there. You might find them in the eaves of your house. They like to be in protected cooler spots. So they really like to be around a lot of concrete because caves are a lot of rock and it's cool inside there too. Intermediates and seniors, you guys also need to know this very unique order called Solifugi. These are the sun spiders and the wind scorpions, and they're found in arid regions. Arid means dry, so they're found in places that are super dry. They um, are inconsequential. They're neither good, not really bad. They're eating other things, but they're found in places where we're not living, and so the things they're eating out there is not really a benefit necessarily to us. So wind scorpions and sun spiders are these really odd looking things. They look like they have a big giant head, but this is actually part of their cephalothorax. So a big head with like double biting mouth parts, kind of like, like four pieces that will on, that will chew. They're super, super fast. They run like the wind, which is how they get the name wind spider. Sun spider comes from the fact that they live in very sunny, dry places and they're found in the driest areas of the state. So if you live in um, San Antonio and west of San Antonio, you'll probably come across them. If you live in West Texas, they're more common. If you live in East Texas or South Texas, you probably don't see them because it doesn't rain as, because it rains too much and they like the really dry, dry areas. And finally, um, the last thing that our intermediates need to know only um, and seniors, so juniors, you guys don't need to know this, is an order called Columbula. Columbula are actually a type of insect, but because they're so primitive, they're often separated from all the insects that we've looked at. And it has something to do with where their mouth parts, um, what their mouth parts look like. They're outside of the head instead of held inside of the head. So um, they're called springtails. They are often found on the surface of puddles or, or water and in leaf litter and things like that. And these are considered variable because sometimes they get inside and they are annoying and so they can be a pest, a nuisance. But if they're not coming inside, there's so many of them outside and so they're just out there doing what they do. So variable as far as being um, its significance. Um, I would know, especially if you are a senior, this term furcula. So they're called a springtail because they have these little tails that normally are hooked up underneath their belly. And that tail is called a furcula. And when they get irritated, they will unhook it and pop, and that makes them leap or jump. Um, they prefer moist habitat, so very dry areas of the state, you're not going to see them. But where, whenever you have times of the year when it's wetter, then they're more common, and they are known to move inside sometimes, and that can become a nuisance. Now, for... Um, intermediates and juniors, we're no longer going to look at anything that you guys are responsible for for the contest, but we are going to look at, but we are going to look at four other orders and classes that seniors only are responsible for. So this one has a really funny name. I can hardly ever pronounce it correctly myself. Thelophonida are the uh, is an order of um, vinegaroons, and you guys probably know what vinegaroons look like. These are also found in arid regions, same places that you would find the sun spiders and or wind scorpions. And they're inconsequential. They're neither good nor bad. They're just kind of there. And this is what they look like. They are um, black, uh, very big, and they have this long tail. Sometimes they're also called whip scorpions. So they have this long whip-like tail usually longer than this even, and they can actually, when they get irritated, they can squirt out a smell that smells like vinegar. So um, the, the chemical that smells like vinegar, and so that's how they get the name vinegaroon. 
You also need to know the order isopoda. Isopods are the sow bugs or pill bugs, the roly polies. And you find these in compost, in decaying organic matter. So they're found in um, plants that are dying off, uh, your compost that's breaking down, in your mulch, places like that. And they are variable because sometimes they're a pest. If you have brand new seedlings that are hatching out, they'll chew on those and they can be considered a plant pest. But most of the time, they're just in the landscape and they're not really causing major issues. And so a sow bug is the one that's on the top right. Sow bugs are more flattened um, and they don't actually have the ability to roll up. So they, they usually also in, in nature kind of look more gray than the pill bugs do. They appear to be softer. Whereas the pill bugs are able to roll up into little balls. We call those roly polies. And if you look at them, they're more, they're less flattened. They're more, um, rounded on their back. They look like an armadillo, but these are all, um, in the order isopoda. They're actually in the class crustacea. So these are the only crustaceans that you need to know for the 4-H contest. There are two other classes. You don't need to know the order name for these guys, just their class. And that is gonna be the centipedes and the millipedes. So class Chilopoda, C-H-I-L-O-P-O-D-A, Chilopoda are the centipedes. Their host or where they're found is gonna be on the ground. They're not found crawling up trees or on plants. They're always gonna be on the ground. And they're actually inconsequential. Yes, they can bite, but they don't want to bite humans. So you have to mess with it first to get it to bite you usually. And this is what they look like. This is the Texas giant centipede. Sometimes it's called a red-headed centipede or a yellow-bellied centipede. And so the big difference between centipedes and millipedes is centipedes have a head with two antenna, very thick antenna, and you can see all these little body segments going all the way to their end region. Well, if we look at each one of these body segments, there are two legs, one on each side, one pair of legs coming off of every body segment. So one pair of legs per body segment means it's a centipede. They also appear to be a little flatter. And if you've ever seen one run, they run kind of like a snake. They're real twisty and turny. These back legs are not actually stingers. These are actually modified legs that trick their predators. So if you're whipping that around, I'm sorry, that trick their prey. So if you're whipping that around, the prey are going to go towards the head where they have mouth parts that will bite and kill their prey. So that's actually an adaptation to trick their prey to come to their face so they can eat them. Now millipedes are in their own class called diplopoda. Diplopoda are found in leaf litter, so kind of where isopods are going to be found is where they're found under stuff, um, under mulch, in a garden bed where you have a lot of leaves that have fallen down and kind of broken down. And they're considered variable because just like the isopods, they can eat young plants, but normally they are just in the landscape not really doing anything bad. And the big difference between millipedes and centipedes, if you look very closely, a millipede has, um, their antenna look very different. The head is more rounded. Um, the body is more rounded instead of being flat. And if you look closely at every little body segment that they have, there's actually two pairs of legs coming out as opposed to just one. So two pairs of legs per body segment is the difference between a millipede and the centipede, which only has one pair of leg per body segment. And that's going to do it for all of the non-insects that you need to know on the 4-H entomology contest. So good luck um, in your studying and good luck on your contest.